Earlier I spoke to Stefan Peterson, founder of Distance for Difference, to find out more about what they do and about how we all can get involved in Saturday's Real Gratitude Run. The Real Gratitude Run by Distance for Difference takes place this weekend, Saturday the 24th of October. Wherever you are, this virtual running event is aimed at raising funds for a range of children's charities and promises to test your limits in a very real way. Joining us to fill us in, in fact, on the Real Gratitude Run, what Distance for Difference is all about, as well as how we can all get involved in transforming our society for the better, is Chief People Officer at Pragma, also the founder of Distance for Difference, Stefan Peterse. Stefan, good evening and thank you so much for joining us. Hi Benito, thank you for having me. I hope you guys are well and our listeners are well as well. Thanks, Stefan. Firstly, what is Distance for Difference? When did it all start? You know, but Nita, it's now 15 years back. Um, we had that Asian tsunami uh, in December 2004, and that just rocked me to the core. Um, you know, the devastation and uh, homelessness and people that lost their lives. And I was in sunny South Africa. It was December, and um, I started to wonder what I can do to make a difference. Long story short, I started running. Uh, we created a uh, fundraiser platform called Distance for Difference. Uh, it's now a non-profit organization. And uh, during the last 15 years, uh, we've raised and distributed more than almost 7.5 million rand now. Um, so it's a bit crazy if you think of it. But still, um, yeah, it's a small amount in the bigger scheme of things. But um, we believe we've um, had the opportunity to, to make a, a significant difference in the lives of children vulnerable children and, and children really in need. And yeah, you know, these days we, we use the organization to mobilize athletes and cyclists, runners to um, you know, create personal campaigns to raise funds or we encourage them to take part in our two main fundraising events called the 500 Cycling Challenge as well as the real Order Gratitude Run then. Um, so yeah, it's been, a, it's been a journey of tremendous growth tremendous blessings um, and uh, I think yeah we'll probably talk about the last year and how that affected all of us um, and it had you know a major impact on us as well no doubt but just before we get there Stefan mm. just firstly why is it important for distance for difference to be involved with these range of children's charities mm. and, and are you able to highlight the, the different children's charities that yes yeah, sure. you are supporting Benito, you know, all those years ago, what really, you know, in, in our early interaction with, with the children's charities, you know, when we visited them, you know, what really struck me was that it's really angels working with children uh, in need in, in, you know, different, you know, different aspects, and that that is really special people working with them, um, and, and that's their focus, really caring for children, and, and their focus is not to raise funds, and now I was thinking, you know, how can we help them? And, and that's basically why DFOD started, um, to take that burden from the children's charities, to let them focus on what they do best and uh, allow us as athletes and sporting people and, and business people to, to create a platform to raise funds for them so that they can do their job. And, you know, over the years, we've, we've had tremendous interactions with, with various charities, and I'm just going to list a few of them. Sure. Um, Kingdom Kids, Victory Angels, Educare, Little Fighters Cancer Trust, Sylvia's Foster Home, Sadoka Foster Home, the Living Hope Foundation, the Inibala Trust, the Spirit Foundation, the Help Organization, Ubuntu House, Yarden Enrichment Center, Arches Choice, Esther von Sell Foster Care, Kingdom Kids, Patch Alderberg, Little Angels, The Ark, the list goes on and continues. And with some of these, we've had a, a very long, uh, you know, relationship that now spans more than, you know, a decade. Um, and it's, it's humbling. Um, it is tear-jerking at times um, to, to hear of their needs and to see these children, but also so, so rewarding to uh, experience um, the gratitude, the love, the, the thankfulness, the, the sparkle in the eyes of these children when, um, when you know our little effort has, has made a difference. And then along comes COVID-19 and turns mm. the entire world upside down. What sort of impact did it have on, yes, on the charities yeah. and also the work that you do at D4D? Mm. 
Yeah, I think irrelevant and very good question, um, Benito. It, it definitely had a severe impact. If I if I take the charities uh, firstly, um, you know, uh, one of the ladies that we support, Esther von Sal Foster Care, comes to mind. She she looks after two beautiful children called Zanelli and Zoe. And um, you know what the beauty is of working with some of these uh, organisations and, and, and women, you know, caring for these children is they don't still sit still and do nothing. Um, Esther, for example, ran a tuck shop at, at a local school, and obviously with lockdown, the school closed down, the tuck shop uh, closed down. So she had absolutely no income during the you know four, five, six months that we were under harder lockdown. Mm. Um, and that's where D4D came in and, and we literally carried her with the funds that we had available. And I think she's just one example of, of many charities. I'm, I'm thinking of, um, you know, a local charity in, in the Somerset West uh, area uh, looking after young babies. Um, and, and they had no income. And, and we had to, you know, reach out and, and, and think how, how we can assist. And, um it just became more evident, you know, we, uh, we they perhaps previously had a few avenues to create some funds as well themselves. Uh, all of those avenues closed down. And for us, as D4D, you know, we, we normally host, you know, major fundraising events like the Gratitude Run, like the 500. We realized that this year that's not going to be possible. Um, and we had to think of alternative ways of, of raising funds. I was uh, one of the crazy guys that ran a marathon around my house during lockdown. Uh, there was a bunch of teenagers that caught onto that um, uh, via a colleague of mine. His son and, and, and his friends um, got together and they did a virtual run. And, and together we raised 172,000 rand, which we... Um, which we gave away completely. We didn't, you know, kept any, everything for our, or anything for our admin costs, and, and we just said we'll, we'll trust that that will come from somewhere else. We just had to help where we can. And of course, you know, stranger to running yourself, having completed yeah. what is it, something like um, three consecutive comrades marathons, <laughs> ten Cape Town cycle <laughs> tours. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm still running, but um, yeah, I'm not running that far anymore. <laughs> Tell us about Saturday's real gratitude run. It's yeah. a real big one for difference, uh, for distance, for difference. Benito, yeah, as I said, we had to reinvent ourselves a little bit, and um, yeah, many other organisations also hosted virtual runs, and uh, we we caught on to that idea obviously as well, um, and we created what we call. Uh, normally we call it the gratitude run, and, and this time we were a bit counterintuitive and called it the real gratitude run. Although mm -hmm. it's virtual, it's still real, it's still running, it's still people going out on the road and, and participating. And we were quite creative in terms of um, you know, inventing a number of categories to, to literally make it possible for any walker or runner to take part. Um, so there's, there's an array of categories. There's four main ones, um, and I can quickly just share about them, there's a, a further category where we encourage individuals or teams to go as far as they can in three, six or 12 hours. There's the higher challenge, uh, which takes uh, people up a virtual table mountain uh, or to simply challenge them to go as high as they can in elevation gain in 12 hours. Then for the normal uh, runners, we will know that the 5K, the 10K, the 21K, the half marathon and the marathon and even a one miler. So for those that just want to do a distance, we call it the quicker category. And then something very creative. You've seen these people with their GPSs running and, and creating these uh, art works on the on the GPS um, apps. And, and these are what we call the creative category. So if you want to draw a little dog running around or a heart shape, I've actually got a, a friend in, in the US. He's going to run a heart in the middle of Manhattan New York area, um, so he's entered for that category. So there's literally something for everybody, wherever you are, where you're in Antarctica, in Gauteng, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, worldwide, you can really, really take part. For 119 Rand, buy a ticket and help us to make a difference and continue our work. That sounds fantastic, Stefan. So how do our listeners get a ticket until, and until when can they enter? Yes, uh, we've decided they can actually still enter on the day. For if you want to go for that one-mile run, uh, half past 11 on Saturday evening, you can still enter at 11 o'clock in the evening as well. So it's still open. 
the easiest is just go go to our website uh, d four d s a d the number four the letter d s a Google that uh, or Google the Real Gratitude Run. Uh, the tickets are available on Quicket. There's a link to Quicket on our website as well. Um, and you just follow the instructions, enter your details, buy with your credit card and uh, box your uncle. Uh, you can also phone Tasha, our administrator, on 082-415-5595 uh, or visit our Facebook page, um, Distance for Difference, search for that. And we're also on Instagram. So there are many avenues to get to those tickets. And what is your hope for Saturday's Real Gratitude Run, Stefan? Um, Benita, we, we are in dire straits. I'm, I'm wishing and, and hoping and praying for a miracle. Um, you know, last year or last time, last year this time, we, we sold a lot more tickets for the actual event. It's not going so smoothly this year. We, st- we obviously need the, need the funds. Um, but I want to get back to, you know, this year and, and what we've all gone through. And, you know, I'm the first to admit that People and myself are all also struggling with emotional uh, well-being, with uh, financial challenges, with, with so many things that go through our minds. But if I take a step back and and I think about the situation that I'm in, there's there's something all of us can be grateful for, and that's where the name, the gratitude run, comes from. And I want to encourage our listeners, uh, all all of you out there, that can make a difference and can contribute even if you don't want to take part and just make a donation you can do that as well on the site but but think about what you can be thankful for and and see whether you can save a one 119 rand to to contribute and to make a difference and let's buy a ticket and let's let's wear you know our our colors are red and white and i'm i'm encouraging everybody wear a red t-shirt even if, if a red overall is all that you have, you can partake mm-hmm. in that as well. But it helps us to continue to make a difference in the lives of, of, of SA's vulnerable children. And, yeah, as I said, we need a miracle, and, and we're trusting the Lord for one in this in this case. Lastly, Stefan, what are your, your future dreams for D4D? For D? It's, it's just to continue. Um, if I think about you know what's happening in our country and there's, there's such a lot of unhappiness and, and discourse and, and people not not working together and, and money being wasted I think we we just we just wishing for a, a platform to continue to to highlight the plight of, of children in need and to be able to to manage the funds that that we we've raised over the years and as I said about seven and a half million rand. Ninety percent of that goes directly to our beneficiaries, to mm-hmm. children in need. And uh, there's not many charity fundraising organisations that can say that our running costs, operating costs are extremely low. And we want to continue that work, um, fighting for the plight of children, and and really making sure that they've got something to smile about, and that there's a bit of a future secured for them. Take part in Saturday's Real Gratitude Run by Distance for Difference. is taking place this Saturday, the 24th of October. Get your tickets via d4dsa.co.za. Stefan Peterson, Chief People Officer at Pragma and the founder of Distance for Difference. Appreciate your time, Stefan. Thank you for joining us and all the best for Saturday. I appreciate the opportunity and um, thank you. Thank you for the work that you guys are doing for promoting um, organizations like ourselves, for for promoting and, and speaking for those that can't. Thank you.